Bom, 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 bom. What's happening, Pandy Nation? Peter Von Pandy here. I've been playing a lot of golf. I think a lot of people have been this summer. It's kind of one thing the crown has allowed you to do. So I have been fooling around with my driver, as you know. I actually created a one length driver, 40 inch driver from my Callaway Maverick Max, and I really liked it. I definitely have loved what I have been able to accomplish with it but it has left me wanting in some ways. And while I have always kind of been enamored with the PXG brand here, which stands for Panda Extreme Golf, many people think it stands for Parsons Extreme Golf, but I don't think that's true. But the issue with my Maverick Max is that it's a draw bias driver and you can only adjust it basically to kind of enhance the draw bias or not. What I really wanted, especially now that I've got my driver shortened, is something that was almost infinitely adjustable. Uh, draw, fade, front, back, you know, and I looked, I looked all over and there really aren't any drivers that will do that. But I found this, it's actually by PXG. It's the 0811 X Gen 3 prototype. I think that's what they call it. And it has four adjustable weights, which is actually what I wanted. On top of that, this one, the X, I believe, versus the XF is actually built for people with a downward attack angle, which is what I have, negative 5.5 on average. So I hope I got those models right. So of all the clubs out there, this one was the only one that had the adjustability that I needed. And it kind of looks like that the design is actually exactly what I need for my swing. And on top of that, they were having a sale because PXG is not exactly the cheapest brand out there. So I went ahead and pulled the trigger. Let's unbox this thing. It does take a little while to get these because they are basically custom built. I feel like I'm unboxing an Apple product here. And, ooh, look at that. The box is cool. And there is the club down on the bottom here. Now, I know when you buy a PXG driver, and especially the highest end ones, they usually come with some really nice accessories. And what I mean is like a premium head cover. I think because what's going on with PXG right now, you don't get quite that. But everything about this is supposed to exude quality. The club is right down here. I actually kind of ordered it totally based on specs. So I did not know it was gonna come with this blue shaft. It looks pretty cool, but that's not what I was expecting. Looks like we get a little booklet here. We also get the adjustment tool, which is your kind of your torx wrench. We also get a PXG sticker there with its winged logo. 0811 is actually kind of a cool designation. Uh, Mr. Parsons, who founded the company, was a Marine. I guess he is a Marine. Once, they say once a Marine, always a Marine. And 0811 is actually a designation for cannoneer, I believe. So someone firing artillery, which is kind of cool because that's his designation for a driver. And then the irons, I think, are 0311, which stands for infantry. So it's kind of cool. You got your cannoneer and then you got your irons. That's all your infantry. So it's a pretty cool little naming convention. Now, you also get this little PXG quick stick cart magnet. Looks like a poker chip. Not entirely sure what that's for, but whatevs. Now, here is where this is a little different. I think, you know, it's not bad in my opinion, but the PXG drivers used to come with like a full leather head cover and it looked pretty sweet. This actually comes with some sort of like, I think they called it some sort of nylon head cover, but you can see here, this PXG logo on top is like those rubber morale patches. It's pretty sweet looking, man. Look how big that sucker is. You know, it is like four millimeters tall sticking out the top. You can feel it. Ooh. I like it. I do like presentation. As much as I don't care about that and I just want good value, I do like being taken care of sometimes by companies. And here's the driver himself. Oh, you gorgeous little baby. And there it is, 0811X. The plus is for people with an upward attack angle and it's just slightly different. It comes in a slightly higher loft as well, I believe. Now, when you order this, you kind of order it to spec and so you can pick your shaft. I got it with the PXG grip here, which kind of looks just like any standard rubber grip. You know, it's pretty nice. This shaft here, I was like, oh, I'll order another one of these shafts. I'll cut it down to 40 inches. I'll just swap them in and out, see which one I like better. But this shaft right here, this Riptide, was like $300 from retailers. So I was like, what? So I'll get to that. I'll talk a little bit about the value proposition here, which I actually think is pretty good. Now here is the head itself, and this is pretty awesome. It's actually a pretty different take on head design than their original PXG drivers. The other ones were all glossy. It was kind of more of a monolithic look, and it had these little tiny tiny Allen screws that were either titanium or tungsten, I think, and you would kind of move those around. Now that's a big 
ask for people that are doing their own adjustments on drivers. It just takes a long time, but you can get really fine adjustments with it. But what they've done here is that they actually changed this driver to use the same putter weights that they use on their putters. And so that's pretty cool. And what you can see here is we have forward, back, left and right, which is pretty awesome. You can also see we still have that shiny look here, but it's almost like a strap because we also have this matte finish and it looks very smart. I will say that the whole big old school shiny PXG with the big PXG across the top was kind of brash and in your face and I kind of loved it. This one is a little more subtle. In fact, this PXG is in a, like a gunmetal, like a matte gray look there. You do have PXG up here on the toe and you can even see that weight uh, kind of sticking out right there. And then if we go around to the front, we have the face here, which these lines are like etched on. There's no real heavy grooves or anything like that. So it's very much like my Callaway face. This is what it will look like to you at a dress. And you have this carbon fiber top, which is also like the Callaway. It's really nice. We have a little bit of this kind of hood scoop looking design. As far as I understand it, Mr. Parsons is a billionaire. I'm sure he loves his cars. Everything about this, you know, the whole company's design aesthetic is kind of around hot rod so that's kind of what it's meant to mimic we have a little x right there for the center mark which is kind of cool now i want to show you here that the hosel is actually much shorter than a lot of the adjustable drivers and the reason there is that they have a lot of adjustability but i'll tell you what to adjust it you have to undo the little screw there and you basically can only rotate the shaft and that gives you I'm gonna guess maybe like 12 adjustments. What I don't like about that is one, when you do that, you are going to rotate the grip. So in the case where you wanna adjust this so that's 180 degrees, your grip, where you're normally gonna be looking down at this logo is going to have to rotate all the way around. Now, that's important to know because what you want is a pretty symmetrical grip like this one is. You know, in the MCC Plus, four grips from Golf Pride, your standard Velvet Tour grips, those are all gonna be pretty symmetrical. But if you're using an Align grip with an Align going down the middle or some of those that are raised so that they have a little bit of an edge that you can feel, you're obviously not gonna want that. And if you're a little OCD and you don't like seeing your logo slightly off or whatever, either you're going to have to put it in the position you want and then re-grip it or you're just gonna have to learn to live with it. Now, now this right here is maybe one of the most important things. Right there you can see it says prototype, nine degrees, nine degree driver prototype. And what I don't understand, and many times here I like to give you the facts, but now I'm gonna do a little guessing. So the prototype means that this is not necessarily a production driver. In fact, this driver is being used by professionals on tour, so it must be USGA compliant, but it's kind of a way that they get feedback from people who actually know what they're doing on golfing. Now on their website, they say, hey, we wanna make some of these prototypes available because everyone's given us really good feedback. Now we want feedback from people. I'm not sure how they're gonna do that. I don't know if they're gonna send me a survey or anything. I don't really think they are. Now my guess is that maybe they had the molds, they were going to make some changes to this before they go to the final one. They have a bunch of heads in stock. And so to me, I'm kind of guessing that they just want to liquidate what they have. Now, if you wait for the production version as opposed to the prototype version, my assumption is maybe the sound or the qualities or maybe some of those small adjustments, maybe they're going to do a big redesign or whatever, you know, that you'll get that in the production version. But if you're going to go with the prototype version, it might just be in a little bit of no man's land. It might not be exactly the same as the next production version, but I think it's an improvement over the old one. So I I went ahead with this because I don't know what they were going to do in terms of weight and I love the fact that I can weight this any way that I want. Now if you look at these weights down here I actually thought one of these weights was going to have little white markings but what I can tell you is that this one looks like the only one that's different the one in the front here and they have little shiny black markings on four of the dots here all the rest are just kind of flat black and according to the spec sheet that they sent me when i ordered this one of these weights and i think it's this one is 15 grams and the rest are two and a half grams now what i really love about this is that i bought a separate weight kit and you can actually buy a whole putter weight kit from them but they were out of stock and get a handful of different weights and because i only have now four weights and they just go in and out with that torque wrench it's gonna be a lot easier and quicker to do that and make those adjustments. But I'm hoping, because the adjustability on this is so much more than my Maverick Max, for me, going to a shorter driver, this might be the perfect club. And I tell you what, even if you're not going to a shorter driver, everything I've heard is that this club is amazeballs. Let's take it to the range, get it dialed in, and see what I think. All right, so I've been playing around with the PXG and 
my Callaway Maverick here, and I thought I would give you my conclusions on it. First of all, I love the way this looks. The matte finish is great for, you know, reducing glare, and it's kind of nice to look at. It's got those nice contours, and I actually like this a little bit. It kind of helps frame up and line up square to the ball. Now, this is a traditional head style, and I actually like this too because I think it looks great. There isn't really much to fuss about. It's a little shiny, and, you know, it's totally different than this matte finish, but the shininess I kind of like, and it's kind of refreshing to have this really big looking head behind the golf ball. In fact, I would say these are pretty close in size, but I actually do like this quite a bit, even though some people might prefer this. I'm actually pretty indifferent to them. So it depends on what you like in terms of look, but I actually like both. Now, I will say that as I was hitting this, initially I wasn't hitting it any better than my Maverick Max. And what I thought, was that I would play around with the weights. Now, what I did find here is that having four positions that the weights can be in is really, really nice. And I actually bought an aftermarket set of weights to try to uh, tinker with this a little bit more. What I found is that having the 15 gram weight in the back and moving from a two and a half gram to a five gram weight in the heel really kind of duplicated the results I was seeing with this. Now, that being said, duplicating the results between these two uh, ended up getting pretty easy and I could hit both of these about the same distance and really from a data standpoint they were flying about the same, carrying about the same and there was no difference. And so that's one of those situations where you think hey if you're buying a premium product at a premium price point you expect more performance out of it but that's just not really the way it happens. I mean smash factors are 1.5 because that's really what you're limited to on driver heads. So if you're hitting this well and you hit this well you're probably going to get about the same thing and I did like the fact that it was just adjustable so you could uh, bias it more towards forgiveness or height or fade or draw and so that's really nice. The adjustability here is really awesome whereas on the Maverick Max, you really only have two positions here and even less on some of the other ones. It's gonna be a draw bias driver. It's never going to be a fade bias driver where you can do that with this. So if you're kind of right in the middle and you might just need a tweak to the left or the right side, this is kind of your head. Now, I also will say in terms of the sound, this had a duller sound and I think it's maybe, I think they have like a TPU honeycomb covering on the bottom here that kind of dampens that sound. And this has much more distinct ping sound. You know, it kind of sounds like a tink as opposed to a thud. And so I would say they both sound good. But personally, I actually kind of like the tink, kind of the plink that you get when you hit the driver correct. Here, it's not quite as satisfying to me. It sounds fine and it's actually less loud, I think, and less obnoxious on the ear. So if it's just something that you kind of want a more muted sound, then this is probably the club that you want. But I actually prefer the sound on this, but they both sound good, if that makes sense. For example, the Mercedes AMG GT sounds great, and the Aston Martin Vantage has basically the same running gear, but it sounds amazing. That's what it sounds like to me. So anyway, so in conclusion, I like this driver head and I like this driver head as well. And they both perform about the same and neither of these are really inexpensive, you know, for four or $500, that's what it's going to cost you to get into a full club on the Callaway, but the PXG is going to be more expensive. Now, this is the prototype. And so the pricing on this is for whatever reason, like I said, really reduced. I think it's almost like half off. So it's about $400, which is actually less than the new Big Bertha B21 and some of those. So from uh, the standpoint of getting a premium head and like a two or $300 shaft on it, I actually think it's a really good value. So if you're looking for a new driver, to me at $400, this PXG, surprising to say it, probably can't be beat, especially with all the adjustability. I really, really like it. But if the pricing were still premium to the Callaway, then I'd probably just say, you know, get this Callaway. This is a great driver. It served me well, and I'm probably going to stick with it. So this is a wonderful club, and at this price point, a very good deal. If this were a $700 or $800 club, then it would be a no-brainer to me to just stay with the Callaway. As it is, because they're pretty similarly priced and because they perform similarly, uh, I am probably just going to stick with my Callaway. I love the fact that there's a uh, a, a strong aftermarket. I can get the weights I want. I can get shafts very quickly. Hey, nothing wrong with this PXG. It's pretty awesome. I kind of love having one. It's a brand that I never thought I would ever own personally, but you know, it hits fine. Sounds good. Looks tremendous. I want to just look, depart. Hey, pick up a PXG. You won't be disappointed. If you want to pick up this PXG or this Callaway, I'll put links to both of them in the description below. Peter Von Panda.
out. 